Hello guys and welcome to a history video on why Enrique IV was one of the last terrible kings in medieval Europe. In the game, Enrique is the heir of Castile and one of the only characters in the game who is a 000, meaning he's incredibly incompetent. So, without further ado, let's find out why this was the case. Enrique was born in 1525. His father, Juan II of Castile, was weak and controlled by the politically astute first Duke of Tegilio, who was called Avero de Luna. The Duke eventually became so powerful that the King got rid of him. Powerful nobles causing havoc in Enrique's father's reign would soon be seen under his reign as well. As Enrique grew up, he married his first wife at the age of 15, but then 13 years later, in 1453, Enrique divorced her, stating that the marriage had not been consummated. Enrique was then crowned King of Castile after his father's death in 1453. Growing up, Enrique had been given his own political court by his father. The reign of his father had been unpopular, so given the age of Enrique and the experience Enrique has with the issues infecting Castile, many people hoped that Enrique would become a better king than his father. And at the start of his reign, Enrique was ambitious, hoping to consolidate the economic platform of the kingdom and improve the relationship with the nobility. In 1455, Enrique married Joan of Portugal and secured an alliance with the Portuguese. Enrique summoned his court full of nobles, outlining his plans of a new tax law and planning an offensive war against Granada. During this court meeting, a leading noble figure stood out, known as Don Juan Pacheco. This noble was incredibly ambitious and had plans plans to play the role that the Duke of Tegilio had done in the previous court. Enrique and Juan Pacheco had a close friendship going up, which led to Enrique being favourable towards the noble. However, Juan Pacheco was not popular with the Spanish church and many other powerful nobles. However, this wasn't heavily considered by Enrique, leading to his first mistake, as Juan would betray him later on during his reign. After this court assembly, Enrique began two military campaigns in 1455 and 1458 against Granada. This led to a war of attrition, costing a large amount of men and money to fight against Granada, but no land was taken. Consequently, a large amount of nobles became discontent with Enrique. Archbishop Alfonso Carrillo then accused Enrique of misusing funds in 1457. Enrique also, during this time, allowed Juan Pacheco to take complete control of government policy. Juan used multiple ways to neutralise opposition within the kingdom. However, this was proven to be unsuccessful and an aristocratic coup formed in opposition to Enrique. This league was very powerful, with a number of powerful nobles supporting it. It was clear, therefore, that after the initial success of his reign, he began to let his followers take over. Juan Pacheco then manipulated Enrique into signing a heavily burdened treaty on Enrique with the rebel faction. Little did Enrique know that Juan was secretly negotiating with the rebel faction. This peace deal would be a turning point in Enrique's reign, as he conceded the power of the crown within the treaty. The increase in the power of the rebellious faction led to a decrease in public order and authority within Castile. As this decline occurred, Henry managed to gain a female heir called Joanna in his new marriage. However, the fact that Henry could not have a child in his first marriage allowed rebellious nobles who were not happy with his rule to claim that his daughter was illegitimate and said his half-brother, Alfonso the Innocent, should become king. Eventually, a new civil war broke out. This time, however, after years of fighting, Henry was politically weak and not strong enough to fight off the rebellious nobles this time. Eventually, he gave in and compromised by acknowledging his half-brother as his heir. Enrique, however, later acceded on his promise after regaining some strength, which led to another civil war and concluded in a draw at the Battle of Olmedo. Despite Enrique holding on to his throne, his lack of a strong heir led to the Castilian succession crisis after his death in 1474. So, to sum up, although Enrique didn't inherit a particularly strong kingdom from his father, his lack of leadership led to nobles taking too much power from him, and the lack of heirs also allowed nobles to come up with legitimate concerns to rebel against him. I think, therefore, Enrique is a truly terrible king and should be known as that. Thank you guys for watching. I know it's a bit cringe to ask, but if you haven't already, please do subscribe, as it means a lot, and make sure to comment below on what history video you want me to do next. And please do check out my other history video on the unholy alliance between the Ottomans and France.